it. Look at them. It's like it's 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 vulgar. Look at them. I told you I was trying to get in the car and they were all coming at me. It's like a brothel. Look at them. Fifth session of the Mississippi Legislature met in Columbia in November 1821 and in special session June 1822. Walter Leake was inaugurated governor here in January 1822. The legislature passed laws for the education of the poor, approved LaFleur's Bluff, now Jackson as the site for the permanent state capital, and adopted Poindexter's Code. Uh oh, what the hell is Poindexter's Code? I don't know, we're going to find out. Let's look at that. It's, it just sounds ominous. Where are we? Baxterville? Yeah, sure. Let me, let me get back to Baxterville. Go Rebels. Yes. Huh? Now what's over there? They don't have like a second academy sitting here, do they? Uh, no, somebody's called the Rebels. Huh? I said somebody's called the Rebels. Baxterville Go Rebels. Unless they just mean home. 
interesting because they just called Baxterville School. No, no. Is the rebels out here? It is little. It is little. Oh, right. And that's the sponsors. Baxterville PTO has a group. Right? Right at Poplarville, so it could be all the same thing. There it is. We kept too much going. Look at those glass blocks. Mm -hmm. That was very cool once upon a time. is it to just see a building called oh. science the theodore l bilbo not, science building yeah not named by some old dixiecrat white supremacist yes it is the county scene it hosts an annual blueberry jubilee it was named for poplar jim smith the original owner of the town site starting in 1959. That's the courthouse annex. annex. That's the original. It's interesting that they kind of have this mashup of their Confederate soldier who really, I don't know if you look at it, is a different. I guess each one of them is kind of a white marble and then they're on this grayer marble. Uh, like even, uh, they might have done all that after World War One, maybe? I know, that's what I think too. And then they do have here, this like Henry Dale Thomas Army, Buford Ladner Army. Rosema Ladner Army, but then they have Charles Jefferson Army Colored. Oh, interesting. Huh. Meaning for World War, for the World War? Well, I mean, this only seems to be about the Civil War and World War One. So this is erected under the auspices of the J.M. Shivers Chapter 1926. So I think the whole thing was done after World War I, I guess at the same time, Confederate and World War I in it. talking about the infestations of love bugs but I'm not sure I have experienced it quite like that that's disgusting do you have the phone on recording this do I have what oh, that was that's really your, stressful that's your seatbelt okay look it's the, the world's last radio shack it's just a gun store with the radio shack thing on top oh of it. yeah that's a pretty good picture we have we need to find we need to find the jail because I have a story to tell. All right. For your tape. And when are you gonna be helping me out with that? Whew, any second now. I'm still getting my breath from the, the attack of the love bugs. I'm never gonna forget that I went to Poplarville and I got attacked by the love bugs. That sounds like a rejected Disney film. <laughs> attack of the love bugs. Attack of the love bugs. Let's see if that. District Attorney's 
office has moved. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, see the sign used to be right there. Okay, we're sitting here in front of the old Pearl River County Jail. Now they have a huge correctional facility, apparently. Um, and the reason is, on February 23rd, 1959, a black man named Mac Charles Parker was arrested for the alleged rape and kidnapping of June Walters, a pregnant white woman in Pearl River County. Um, and basically she accused him of this, this rape, um, even though the story since then kind of emerged that she was probably having an affair with a white man. Um, but they arrested him um, and they put him in jail. But then on three days before he was supposed to stand trial, um, he was kidnapped from this jail cell by a mob, beaten and shot. And his body was found in the Pearl River, 20 miles west of Poplarville, 10 days later. The FBI investigated the, the case um, and they actually know who the men were and they confessed apparently according to this but no one was ever indicted in the killing historian howard smead called the killing the quote last classic lynching in america because that was in 1959. Um, i guess you wouldn't say chaningham and Turner were classic they were also taken out of the jail and killed so yeah that's true yeah but I mean, I guess classic because it was a black man being kind of accused of doing the wrong thing. Or, right, you know, and that's it. Yeah. This is a church right in here. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's part of me that is wondering if he lived on a plantation called Jennifer, Jen, Juniper Grove. And that's why it was going on. Because they just sent it there. But, ahead. Right now it's slow to connect, so. Close the car up to keep bugs out, or do we care? I don't care. Whatever. Huh? Whichever. At this point, you might be keeping them in. It's Oliver's in his name. J. O. Bilbo, 1837 and 1917. Must be about right, I think. For the actual Bilbo, or for his parents? No, no, for his parents. Yeah. He's got the little hole he looks out of. Air hole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, look, I think we can move this. Ugh. We wanted to push it off. Yeah, we have the camera on us. Oh my God. There it is. Jesus. That was, those are his parents, the tall ones. Over there. Take your choice. Should I talk about him here? No, in the car where there's okay. air conditioning. <laughs> and no bugs. Yeah, there's some Cochran's. Yeah. Where's that dad Cochran from? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. But, but, Jennifer Grove could be part of Billo, so let me just look that up real quick before we go anywhere. I'll just ease around. Why don't you go down that road just a little bit? Let's just 
see if there's anything kind of interesting while I'm going to breed. Okay, so let's drop back and talk about who Bilbo actually was. Okay. He was governor. Yes. When to win? Well, he actually been in it first. Oh. Um, I think he kind of snuck in there. So the first first uh, time he served office was 1908 to 1912. And then he was lieutenant governor from 1912 to 1916 in Mississippi. Then he was governor from 1916 to 1920. And then I think he was defeated and then he came back and ran again later um, and then served from 1928 to 1932. Then I think he was defeated again. And then he became a U.S. Senator uh, from 1935 to 1947. Okay. So 12 years. So he was, I mean, a populist. It's sort of in the Huey Long tradition. Yeah. Um, he was, they called him Bilbo the Builder yeah. at one point in his career. Yeah. He was responsible, I think, for uh, charity hospitals. I think what we had read that he was, uh, that he made compulsory high school or, or at least grade school happen for white kids and he uh, state hospitals charity hospitals so he's kind of like Huey Long you know yeah. he's he's working against he's a Democrat but he's working against the sort of urban Democrats who ran the state who were the planters and the wealthy and he's going straight to the little guy right he was a little guy himself he was five two apparently right. Uh, but he's going straight to the little guy and saying, "We, you know, we can get these things accomplished." That's right. Now, by the same token, he is, and you know, a crazy racist. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, the whole nation. Uh, there was a lot of racism in the nation, but and and in the South. But he was, he was really outward with it. You know, even and a lot of people were outward with it uh, early in the 20th century outside of the South, but he was, like, he would say it all. You know, he just went all, all in. And you know, be, trying to be the populist, he right. was going to be, um, you, you know, he wasn't going to at least appear to be that wealthy. Yeah. He was going to be a man of the people, but he also right. wanted to build this property up that we're looking at here. Yeah. Um, the church, he was responsible for, he could breach in the church. It right. Was, I guess the only church he could breach in, but yeah. he would breach there. Um, he wanted this, you know, compound here with the big house, with the lake, and there's even out there a small house in the middle of the lake that he had built for himself. It's like, they called his house, yeah, it was like Dream House and Dream House 2, and Dream House 2 was kind of on this little island uh, in the lake. But he got the built by contractors. <laughs> War contractors. Who like gave him that stuff because yeah. they were getting the contract. Right. And so when he ran again after World War II, there was a lot less, uh, there, or, you know, there's a lot less willingness to put up with that level of racism coming out after of World Hitler. War II. Yeah, even then, well, that's a and subject for another day. Yeah. But yeah, right. So then the country, the mood of the country, had kind of shifted more against what Bilbo was. And, and one of the things that they would, they you know, that you read about is that. He was probably surprised because all of the things that he had been saying and wanting to do for years, such as he was a big proponent of the Back to Africa movement to move black people just because he was such a segregationist and against race mixing and all these other things. So he just wanted black people to go back to Africa and, and you know, and believed straight up, uh, you know, white supremacy just very openly. And so here he was, after World War II, he didn't kind of get the amnesia of the rest of the country <laughs> about, about uh, you know, that we're, we're not supposed to talk that way anymore. We're not supposed to act that way after, after what we saw happen in Nazi Germany. And he kept talking that way and was back in Washington, and Washington wasn't happy with him anymore. So what happened? Well, the, the thing is, while they were going through these hearings, um, he was diagnosed with mouth cancer and got sick fast and so I guess had to go back to Mississippi and 
Charles Parker as he was he was I showed you where he was in the jail there um, he was actually waiting and he, he there's a famous civil rights attorney R.J.S. Brown who's from Mississippi who was defending him and said so what they're saying is that they were afraid he was going to get off and so they took him out of the jail there in Poplarville and then beat him and then drove him and in this as we're going over right now is going going over the Pearl River and it would have been dark that night and this and this is the the bridge from Mississippi to Louisiana their plan had been to hang him from the bridge but then they kind of I think they they say they kind of chickened out because um, they might get caught or something so they waited all that they went to the Louisiana side over here waited until the, the coast was clear and then took him back and then in the, right in the middle of that bridge shot him at close range um, and then weighed him down with these logging chains there were two the lynch mob with two carloads apparently and weighed him down with these logging chains and dumped his body in the river and he was uh, and they said that his body was found like two weeks later partially decomposed like a couple miles downstream or something and uh, and so that was in 1959 but then they caught them all I mean the FBI came in and did what they did and this is not an uncommon story where the FBI comes in came in in the 50s and the 60s and they investigate these cases and you know and then they find out who did it and the whole thing but then they couldn't prosecute them then, right? So they'd hand the cases over. Well, it's a state charge. Murder's right. a state charge. That's right. Now, they had crossed state lines here. You kind of wonder if they could have done something done about that. Done the kidnapping? Yeah. Right, like they did in the D. Moore case that I helped investigate um, right. uh, in South Mississippi. What may be true is that kidnapping charge, that might not have been precedent yet in 59. Yeah. Now, I want to say one thing, though, because it is driving over that bridge and thinking about, you know, them coming over because you've got, you know, a couple car full of idiot rednecks who are, you know, trying to figure out how they're going to pull this off. Right. Right. Think about being that guy who they're going to kill. Yeah. Who's in the car, who's yeah. with them the whole time watching them do this, knowing that he's innocent of what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, it's ridiculous to think that anybody thinks that that wasn't a horrific time in Mississippi's history, mm -hmm. you know, when no sort of justice was happening mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. African Americans had to live in constant fear that just some rednecks could decide they had to die. Right. And then it would happen and the state would let them. Well, and I even just wrote a column about this, about lynching logic and how throughout our history there's been this uh, too often this belief that whatever happens to, to black people who might be accused of something is okay because they, they did something wrong before they get a trial. And so... Uh, or the argument that, well, they must have done something wrong. Exactly. We may and not that's, have gotten on the right thing, but he okay. gets to sit in prison for, right. sit in jail for three years before we charge him formally right. because he's probably been a bad kid or whatever. Well, and even like Jacob Blake, who you know, was just shot in the back multiple times, a lot of people make the excuse afterward, well, he, there was a warrant for sexual assault out on him, which has now been dropped, by the way, or dismissed. But, even if that was true, that does not justify what happened. It would be arrest him without unloading a gun seven times in his back and bring and give him bring them to trial, just like police officers who do <laughs> bad things and kill people or brutalize them should go to trial, right. right? And that's the thing. It's the lack of, and so really when you use the word, the word justice, I mean, even in this man's case, if he did, had raped this woman, which the belief, you know, and that was so used as an excuse to terrorize black men, period, but the belief now is that he didn't do it but even if he had this is horrendous and it's kind of this attitude that we need to start really looking at because we're 
still living with the legacies of it as we excuse these terrible